も自由だだが一つだけ近い I'm trying to think if I've, if I've heard that voice before There is a hint of something that sounds familiar Can't see if you're blind. I mean, yeah. Ah, <laughs>、oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs>、oh, yeah. I was gonna say, great transition. The men. Mm, So it feels like she might not really have anyone else to go to, anyways. Oh. Beautiful art direction. Oh, that's interesting. Of course. お待ちしておりました。ごと、ゴンはどこにいる？お前知ってるんだろう？ゴン様とお連れのお二人はカナリアの案内でこちらへ向かっておられます。本当。ああ、his face just lit up。お部屋でお待ちください。あ。I kind of feel like McConaughey in Interstellar. <laughs> Don't go。承知しておりますと。It's an interesting sweatshirt. Straps. Maybe is it the backpack? Oh. Yeah, I was beginning to feel like that. Maybe there's a bit of a twist、oh. after all. That's a great shot. <laughs> the phone call. Okay. Hey. <laughs> hey, Kukuru Mountain. Kukuga Yashkija, no, 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 Is it just a normal game though? Ah, it's the coin from the phone call. Or not the exact coin, but a coin. A game of perception. Okay. Mm. Oh. 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 That got really sinister, real quick. <laughs> Crush the coin. Oh, that's interesting. キルアは様が来るまでに結論を出す。うん。俺が俺のやり方でお前らを判断せよ。あ。カナリア。命令を無視してお前らをここへ連れてきた罰。三人とも間違えたらキルア様には。ああ。お前らは先に行ったと伝
Now you've got a 50% chance at least if they don't catch it. One can say left, one can say right. Yeah. <laughs> they understand. Okay. Of course it leaves. He's only got the one eye as well. Uh, whoa. Ooh. Can't see if you're blind, apparently. The hell? <laughs> it's the same type of robot toy. Beautiful. It's got at least 30 copies of that. God damn. <laughs> I love this theme so much, man. The boys are coming in. Oh. Ah. Hmm. ah, the demeanor completely shifted there. I think he actually. Oh. <laughs> uh. How wholesome. <laughs> yeah, he's in good hands. Action. Yeah, it's like Look at this. Oh. Big old smile on his face. Handshake? He's got to say it to keep it professional, right? Gonku. <laughs> mm. He didn't think of that possibility. Good lesson. Good lesson to give him. I duty of care, essentially. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, they're out. Oh, they're out. <laughs> uh. Oh. 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 <笑>ああ。残ったのは右手の恋という gave them a fair shot. He wanted to see. Legitimately wanted to see. なら、ハンターライセンスを使えば Mm. あ。だって決めたんだもん。やることそれ I might take some time though, my boy. <laughs> Pride and honor. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Same. Same. I mean, I, I think I know, but... 
spiders. Phantom Troop, the tattoo. Or he knew already, before. Mm. Stopped him dead in his tracks. Ooh. York New City? New York? Ah. Whoa. That's going to draw quite the crowd. There it is, okay. その日ひそかは<笑> <laughs> but getting into med school is the <laughs> the tough bit. And that leaves the two homies. Aww. <笑>お前な、さっきなんつった。そんなんで密かを一発でも殴れるって言ってんのか。<笑><笑> <laughs> this should be interesting. <laughs> humble. He actually is humble and realistic. It'll become easier. Ooh, normal means then. <laughs> and he refuses to use the hunter license. Ooh. Heaven's Arena. Oh, it. Like a tournament? To a new stage, eh? Okay, let's get into it. Episode 25. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's a great wrap-up episode. Um, even though, you know, a part of me is a little bit a little bit sad that it's already kind of moved on. Uh for for now at least, from uh I don't know, the, the, the Zolodic arc. I mean, I'm not even sure if you can really call it an arc. Um, but yeah, you know, I was kind of hoping for maybe at least one more episode, right? To kind of gain further insight into the family dynamic, to just kind of have a few more scenes of the family, uh, the different family members just kind of being around each other, right? Yes, I get, I get a bit more of the mom, uh, who is, of course, understandably really quite upset. Um, you see that, you know, in terms of the, I don't know, the hierarchy or the family dynamics, she doesn't have much say in the final or crucial decisions. Re really not much at all. And you see that she kind of she kind of has this, uh, I don't know, head butler as someone she can kind of go to, right? There, It's a bit of a special relationship um, or dynamic or an interesting pairing, uh, to say the least, right? You see... That maybe there is some semblance of an emotional attachment 
to the mother as well. In addition to, of course, Killua, Master Killua, you know, he makes it he makes it clear to the other three, Gon, Kurapika, and Leorio that you know I've known this kid, Master Master Killua, since since he was born, right? So there is this sense of I don't know being protective, even though even though they do have to maintain this uh, notion of emotional uh, detachment or essentially maintaining this element of emotional uh, distance, right? Uh, you know, and of course, gone uh, as, as he departs. He's asking him, right, aren't you going to miss Killua? Right, because as of this point, uh, gone, gone understands that, okay, yeah, this, this man clearly cares for Killua and he, and he wants the best for him. He does. And, and of course, you know, the coin, the coin test, the game uh, certainly plays into it, right? Um, I'll get to all of that, but, you know, let's kind of uh, look at the episode as a whole, especially as far as setups go. I mean, there's a lot of fantastic setup in this. For two major arcs, from the sounds of it, I mean, the ne- I mean, one of them is essentially up next, the Heavens Arena. But going back to Goto's response to Gon, right, us butlers feel no emotional attachment uh, to our employers. And, you know, of course, Gon immediately calls him a liar. Sticks that tongue out. <laughs> I mean, there's so many cute moments of uh, both Gon and Killua. Both of them are just these adorable kids. And I know, it, it, you know, as I'm saying it, it almost kind of feels strange to say it, given the things both of these young men are capable of. But at the end of the day, they are kids. And yes, they are cute. You know, they both have their really cute moments. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting take. Uh, because since the beginning of this anime, or early days of this anime, you know, 25 episodes in now, uh, and even that feels really cool. Feels great, actually, to be 25 episodes in. But, you know, they've hinted at it, they've showcased um, in much more detail since then that there is quite a dark element to this anime, to this story as well, right? And, you know, once again, it kind of alludes to that, uh, the dark nature of this world. I feel, I feel like one of the things that I'm really going to get now at this point is uh, the world building in full flow. Full flow at this point because, you know, our boys, uh, the principal cast is out there now, right? It's beyond the, again, the, you know, the handpicked um, locations of the Hunter exam. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, of course, just through that first arc, the Hunter exam, and through the experiences and, you know, backstories of a lot of these unique characters, you do get a solid amount of world building already. But now, you know, I'm actually out there, right? And now I can kind of experience all of it through the lens of the characters, right? Uh, Killua and Gon are the two that are sticking together, of course. You know, that was one of the main reasons uh, that Killua wanted to be back out there. I mean, yes, you know, he's fond of both uh, Krapika and Leorio. I mean, he got Krapika's name uh, on the first shot, but he kind of, he kind of, he kind of fumbled Leorio's name, but close enough, right? Uh, but it, but the thing is, the fact that he actually cared to remember or actually, you know, uh, even think of him, right? Um, and he was actually quite happy. There's a big smile on his face as he's uh, talking to them or trying to remember their names. <laughs> Though, of course, Kravika immediately, you know, felt that, okay, yeah, uh, both of us are just an afterthought, really, truly. Um, but yeah, you know, there's an understanding there already. It's been there for some time now that, okay, you know, Gon and Killua are these really close friends. And, and you know, the other two are f- on friendly terms, right? And it's applicable to Killua as well. He's clearly on friendly terms with both uh, Leorio and Kropika at this point. Uh, but yeah, you know, they're heading off to Heaven's Arena. It, it appears to be some kind of arena. <laughs> so, you know, there's this possibility to actually train and earn at the same time. So I, I guess you, you get paid for any time you actually get a win, I think. It'll be interesting to see this take on an arena format, right? Another tournament arc, essentially, or perhaps. But again, you know, I've seen enough of this anime at this point to know that it's not going to be a typical training arc uh, through the means of a tournament arc, perhaps, or a tournament setting, right? So yeah, I'm excited about that, for sure. Uh, but yeah, also, there is a bit of sadness, isn't there? I was, I was sad. I was really quite sad to see them split up. But, you know, you have to be realistic about it. Of course, of course, you know, all of these characters have their own stories um, and character arcs. And, and to further that character progression, they do need to put in some time now, right? Leorio has to go cram for his exam, right? At least now he can really pay for it. 
that doesn't have to be a barrier, a barrier to entry, essentially. But yeah, you know, even so, even if he can pay for it now, it's still a tough road ahead, right? Um, because of the profession he, he's uh, looking to pursue, right? Or he's always wanted to pursue. But yeah, I actually love that for Leorio. Really, truly love that for Leorio, that he's, a, he's able to do this now, right? The next step. And then, of course, you've got Kropika, who, who feels that he needs to earn, or not feels... Uh, he does need to earn, um, I don't know, a significant amount uh, or a really specific amount perhaps to gain entrance or entry to um, uh, the auction. The auction. And I'm speaking of September 1st at York New City. Of course, it's playing on New York City. Um, so yeah, you know, this to me is perhaps the most exciting setup for a future uh, story arc in this anime. Right, and it kind of it helps you kind of gauge how far it might be, given the fact that it's about half a year from this point in the story. So you know, there's clearly at least room in there for a few story arcs, maybe maybe two or three of them, depending on the length of each one of the story arcs. Um, you know, I can I can see this next one maybe uh, focus on Kilua and Gone at, at this Heaven's Arena for maybe you know four or five episodes six something along those lines um it's kind of hard to gauge because i kind of need to see the first episode of that arc right to kind of uh, have a better understanding of how exactly it hopes to further the character progression and also in terms of the things it might potentially cover right um so yeah i'll probably have a better idea once i get to the next episode uh the next episode being 27 because 26 is meant to be a recap uh, once again, so I'll be I'll be skipping that, of course. So essentially, the next time I get to see all four of them back together, reunited, it's going to be on September first, uh, in York, New City. So yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's take a dive into this. Now, the reason this comes about in the first place, right? Um, and you know, Leorio knew about it as well that it's this uh, largest or the world's largest auction. and that it's going to have all kinds of rare and unusual items, right? So that alone, is going to attract all the characters, all types of characters, right? This promises to be um, something special, I think. Uh, I mean, the, the setup really made it feel like that. And I'm really quite excited for it. And the fact that it is meant to be the biggest gathering of money in the world, um, yeah, it's going to just attract all kinds of people, isn't it? Um, and, you know, Goto actually kind of had something really interesting to say to Gone. Right? It's an interesting lesson for Gon as he departs, um, you know, about tricks and tricksters, that there's all kinds of people out there. You have to be careful, right? That was one of the reasons he wanted to test these people, Gon and Kropika and Leorio, because again, he, he cares. He cares for Master Killua. They all do. They all do. And and then, of course, an extension to that, he, he was kind of uh, doing it for the mother as well, right? He didn't like seeing her like that. Um, now, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to maybe, uh, speculate that maybe there could be something romantic there. I don't, I don't think so, but there is uh, this understanding, right? She does have trust in Goto. She feels that she can go to him, right? Because she has no one else to go to, really. The mom is certainly quite frustrated. You know, there's even this sense of a ticking time bomb, uh, you know, uh, but also I do feel bad for her. You have to feel for her. Right? She does feel kind of alone, right? That she doesn't really truly have any say in anything, right? She says something like, oh, they didn't even ask me. Once again, they didn't even ask me about my own son. And then she says something else that's quite interesting as well, right? He's the child I shall not give up, right? So she's been through this process uh, time and time again, right? So I, I have... I do have some sympathy, but also, like I said in the last episode's discussion, there is something scary and unsettling about her as well, right? Like I said, taking time bomb. There's moments, you know, she lunges at Killua in the last episode, um, you know, loses composure for a split moment, but then she gathers herself, right? As she sees the stare in Killua's eyes, right? And she's so proud once again. And, you know, one of her main uh, concerns, a major concern is that she feels that his potential is going to be, I don't know, wasted out there, right? That he needs to be here. He needs to be close by. And now that they've split up, I can kind of see uh, an approach that kind of maybe goes back and forth, 
right? Maybe take a few episodes to focus on one group, you know, be it Killua and Gaunt, then maybe focus a bit on the Oreo, um, maybe focus uh, a bit on Kurapika, then maybe focus a bit on the family, right? Um, Illumi, maybe touch up on Hisoka as well. But let's go back to this auction and the collection of people that might show up at, at York New City. Now, you know, Kurapika certainly believes that um, the spiders, right, the Phantom Troop is going to be there. You know, this is an opportunity that that simply that they simply could not pass up on, right? So in addition to people like the Phantom Troop, who I'm really, really quite excited to meet, as you all know, but it looks like it's not going to be happening anytime soon. So, you know, I'll be patient. I'll be patient. But hopefully there is a few things sprinkled in there before I actually get to meet them proper in New York, New City. Maybe I'll get to meet them before then. Right? Maybe maybe I'll get set up moments for them as well before they head out to York New City on September 1st. I believe this is September 1st to the 10th. So I think in those 10 days, some really fascinating things are about to play out. Right? I think that much is going to be clear. But the auction itself, right? They said things like, yeah, you un- unique and rare items, national treasures, stuff like that, right? So there's going to be quite a market for that. I feel like you might have proxies representing um, people in high positions as well, you know, leaders. There could be a political aspect to gaining um, control of certain artifacts, right? And listen, you know, like I alluded to earlier, this anime has certainly established that it can get dark. So let's go there because I don't think I'd be surprised if they do have creatures, right? Or beings even up for auction but some really unique and nearly extinct creatures, perhaps. But you know, the thing is, as I'm saying that, do you know who's really quite unique? Who's essentially the last of his kind? The last of his clan? Kropika. Kropika and his beautiful eyes, the crimson eyes, right? Kropika is going to show up there. And you know, this kind of reminds me of One Piece. There's an arc in One Piece. You have creatures, rare creatures, uh, creatures that don't really belong in certain places uh, being put up for auction, right? And I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to go into potential spoilers, but I can see something really similar playing out here. I could totally see unique, rare, uh, extremely rare creatures and p- potentially beings or humans as well, right? And that's the reason I kind of thought of Kropika, who is really quite unique and rare at this point in time. So there is a possibility that Kropika and the boys might find themselves in um, quite a tricky situation. Hell, there's even a possibility. I think it's a possibility that he might actually come across the eyes, the crimson eyes, right, of his fallen clan. Maybe those could be put up for auction by the Phantom Troop. And if something like that happens, how exactly is Kropika going to react to it, right? Uh, I think York knew is essentially beginning to feel like a, a Kropika-centered story arc. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the others, his friends are going to be there to assist him as well, right? But of course, Hisoka is going to be there as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, a lot of reunions, of course. Uh, and at this point, Gaon has six months so he can actually punch Hisoka, right? Because as of this point, you know, his pride and his honor does not allow him to make use of the hunter license, Right, And it kind of goes back to that conversation that him and Satotes are having in that bed, right? After he comes to. Listen, you've been given the license. You cannot give it back, right? It's official now. But it's up to you. It's completely up to you to use it or to not use it, right? Hell, you know, put it to the side. Use it once maybe you feel the need to use it. Use it once you feel like you're capable of using it or that you've actually earned the right to use it. And that's that's gone, right? My goodness, this kid is, uh, he's so, I mean, he's, you know, equal parts so special and equal parts so naive and so innocent as well, right? In his thought process. I mean, he's really, really quite special. That's for damn sure. Um, and you see, again, you see that during the the game, the coin game, right? Um, but you also get to see a bit of his naive side. And Goto actually implores him to you know be be vigilant about this because I think one of the reasons he puts this test or he puts or he puts the test to them this coin game is because you know he is looking to see if these uh, potential companions these allies if they are worthy of being allies right if they do bring something unique to the table that Master Kilua might not really be 
uh, I don't know, the best at, maybe something he, he doesn't quite excel in. And that's exactly how it is. There are certain things that Gon excels in that Killua is just not that great at, right? And then, again, you, you can flip it as well. Certain things that Killua excels in that Gon isn't quite capable of either. And another thing I kind of want to mention before I move on or forget is, you know, it's nice to see how humble Killua really is. Even though, you know, it's, it's a bit of a comedic moment, that funny face he makes, he's humble. He understands um, that at this point in time, Hanzo is stronger than him, right? Different elements of strength, I suppose, uh, or capacity. Um, but yeah, you know, he ranks himself below Hanzo. And, you know, this kind of goes back to that notion of Illumi um, telling him that, yeah, you know, you know, father and I have kind of uh, trained you to not ever fight anyone that you cannot defeat. That's, that's this rule that they live by. Right? Do not put yourself in a position that is going to essentially get you killed, potentially get you killed or defeated. I mean, of course, Killua is a confident young man, right? But he's also realistic. I love that. I love that about him. You know, he doesn't let pride get in the way, right? It, it takes you all the way back to earlier in the series as well. He immediately realized and understood that, you know, Hisoka is uh, bad news. Let's kind of, uh, let's create some distance. But to go back and finish my point about Goto and his test, his personal test, um, yeah, you know, the thing is, he, he showed Gon at the end there that if he really truly wanted to cheat, he easily could have cheated Gon. And then at that point, Gon would have never seen Killua again from that point on. But he didn't. He gave them a fair shot at it. Right? Because he truly wanted to see. He wanted to see, okay, these are the people and this uh, young man, Gon, is someone that Killua is really drawn to as a friend, so let me test him. Let me see if he truly is worthy of Master Killua, if he can assist, if he is a competent companion to Killua, right? Based on his own standards. Um, so, you know, the thing I really liked about uh, Kukuru Mountain or the Zolodic mini arc, I suppose, is to see not just a family dynamic, but just the whole estate dynamic. And that includes the butlers, right? Canaria. Goto, and some of these other ones, the nameless ones as well. Um, I love how there is this um, duty of care almost. They feel a duty of care towards uh, young master Killua. But yeah, ultimately this uh, test of character, uh, this test of are they vigilant enough? I think it, I think he he was essentially content. At ease at the by the end of it, though of course he had to he had to impart another lesson. There's tricks and there's tricksters, and I'm sure I'm sure he's going to come across many of them uh, over the span of the next uh, few arcs and episodes leading up to York New. Um, damn, you know I'll be honest, and I'm sure you could tell by now I cannot get that idea out of my mind. I'm so excited for that. The whole Kropika and Phantom Troop angle has been really quite exciting to me, right? Especially since that episode. Inside of Trick Tower, as Kropika is triggered by that guy, right? Um, <laughs> the purple fellow, or was it pink? Yeah, purple maybe, or green was it? I think it was purple, right? Uh, he was he was trying to pass off as a member of the Spiders of the Phantom Troop. Um, yeah, since then, since the silhouette shot, I've been so excited about that. And yeah, essentially, I was kind of on the mark about uh, Hisoka mentioning something about the Phantom Troop. Right, it really truly only could have been something like that, given Kropika's reaction to that. Right, and you see, Leorio has a moment here. Uh, he thinks to himself, Ah, so that's that's the reason. This is the reason you were able to put aside your pride. Right, you, I, I remember, I'll never forget, and they show it again in this episode. He's just kind of frozen in his spot as Hisoka whispers that into his ear. Yeah, York knew September 1st, see you there. But also, it confirms that indeed Hisoka knew about it, he knew about. Kropika. He knew about the clan and the things that Fe the Phantom Troop has done to Kropika, right? But, but later in the train, Kropika, he said something like, oh, you know, I, I didn't tell Hisoka this at any point, right? So they're assuming at this point that he must have overheard or someone else might have told him. But this strengthens my speculation or my theory a bit, doesn't it? That indeed Hisoka, maybe if he's not active at the moment, he used to be he certainly used to be a member of the Phantom Troop, or at least he was around enough that he knows about some of the things they've done recently, 
ooh, also I get a glimpse of someone that is keeping keeping tabs on Kilua and Gong, or gone in this sense, because I believe that might be someone from the exam committee. Um, maybe not an examiner, but someone that is keeping track of them, much like how they had those guys in the suits. Or on the other end, is it possibly someone that's tracking Kilua, right? Um, on behalf of the family, someone that's been hired, maybe, maybe. But I, uh, my first thought was, okay, this is part of that whole, you know, uh, big twist essentially that, oh, the exam still continues beyond this. So maybe this is a part of it. Maybe, maybe, let's see. You know, I mean, it's quite unmissable. It's, and it's by design, of course. But yeah, I think that should do it for this one, folks. Uh, a really great wrap up episode, right? And now I'm excited about the next steps, the next path, the next story arcs. Right. The immediate one appears to be Heaven's Arena. So, yeah, of course, really quite excited to get to that. And then, of course, in the long term, York New, September 1st. Hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah. But yeah, if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments. Give me your thoughts. If you are interested in early access to the next few episodes right now, uh, full opacity or perhaps timer based full length, consider checking out the Patreon page and potentially supporting the channel. If you are interested, the links are in the description and the pinned comments, also links to social media, things like Twitter and Instagram, if that's your thing. Right then, thank you so much for joining me, folks, and thank you for your time because time is precious. And I do hope to see you again soon for episode 27. Until then, take it easy. <laughs>